Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to War in the Pacific Admirals Edition, our Let's Play series against XTRG. It is February 17th of 1942, the Japanese are moving through their turn, and we are excited to see what is going to happen, or maybe apprehensive is the better word. Uh, in the last turn, the Japanese landed paratroopers in the rear of our positions in China. Uh, they took two key cities that were ungarrisoned. We had some discussion around the house rules for that, but at the end of the day, uh, we agreed wholeheartedly to continue on uh, with those landings having occurred. And so I have begun the process of trying to take care of those forces in our rear. They're weak forces. They're under 100 AV each, and so we have troops on the way to try and deal with them. Uh, but it does kind of threaten our Chinese front line along the river line near Changsha uh, as they control the two major roadways in the rear of that position. And so we are taking steps to uh, resolve the situation. But I honestly think that the Chinese front is going to go through a period of pretty rapid retreat as those forces of ours in Changsha and along that river line are forced to withdraw back into the interior where we have a little bit more defensible terrain. I think one of the problems right now with our position in China is that there simply is too much open and clear terrain and the Japanese military against the Chinese in clear terrain is going to just ravage them and uh, and and you know not give them a moment's rest and so if we try and fight anywhere in a stand-up fight in open terrain we're going to get butchered in China and so we really are gonna have to fall back to the interior the one thing that's been helping us is we have this defensive position along a river line uh, and also the city of Qingxia is a major urban city so you get big defensive bonuses there but that's essentially a one hex deep defensive line there is no retreat there, there are bases that have some forts behind that but the problem is even forts and clear terrain it's just not a, it's not a good idea to fight it out there so we are going to begin the process of falling back um, Meanwhile, Japanese cruisers bombarding positions in southern Philippines. I'm kind of surprised he hasn't tried to crush our forces there, but he really hasn't. Um, and a lot of recon going on here all over the map. Just kind of waiting to see what else happens here. Uh, Japan has already taken the majority of the island of Celebs. They've taken the key points on Belak Papan. We must presume they will be soon landing on Java and Sumatra, the two key oil-producing facilities in the Dutch East Indies, Palembang specifically. Um, he's taken Timor, Portuguese Timor, in the south, or at least the, the bases that had our troops in it. And he is in the process of mopping up different islands on his way north toward Java. So he's slowly working his way up north. Uh, toward the positions there. We do have a fair number of Dutch troops there that are digging in, but their morale is really low. Um, meanwhile, Japanese uh, fighter planes are running a sweep over the, uh, whatever that base is, just across the river on the southern, southwest portion of the Changsha line. More fighter sweeps running out of that area. More fighter, actually no, these are bombing raids. Uh, Leafless, yes, I'm a Yankee. I'm from Wisconsin. Uh, okay. Iron Brigade forever. All right, um, Japanese bombers are hitting uh, Singapore as well, so this appears to be a big day for air attacks. We did have some fighter sweeps running over the bases where he dropped his troops with paratroopers. I think we had an understanding that he was going to bring his paratroopers over, but over continue until the units were fully delivered. But I'm not sure, you know, if the weather cooperates or not, that may, that may hinder his ability to do that. New month means a new day in the Pacific Theater. Yeah, you know. <laughs> At least he's honest. You know, I uh, I'm proud of the Iron Brigade. I'm proud of my Wisconsin my Wisconsin heritage. My uh, my sister did go to high school in North Carolina. Uh, for three years, she went to the uh, University of North Carolina School of the Arts, which is a ballet school. It's uh, part of the University of North Carolina system, but um, they have a high school portion to that uh, campus. And most ballet dancers do not go to college because by the time you're in your like mid-20s, that's like your peak part of your career. So she went to high school there and uh, spent a fair bit of time there. I actually almost went to UNC Asheville. Uh, for undergrad, I ended up going uh, somewhere in Wisconsin instead. But I did seriously look at UNC Asheville. It's beautiful out that way. Okay. Uh, 
All right, so not a super eventful turn so far. Fair amount of bombing in China, a little bit of bombing in Malaya. Not a lot else has happened. It looks like we've got one H-81A3 Flying Tiger flying against six KI-30 and dive bombers. Uh, again, just over Changsha. So I had like three or four Flying Tigers that hadn't pulled back yet to Chongqing, still based out of, I forget what the name of this base, maybe Chengtha uh, up here. They had been based there providing cover over Changsha, but when we had our last major air battle, we pulled the, the airframes back to Chongqing. Now, we did have a couple of frames that were damaged and could not withdraw, and it looks like that Flying Tiger, he just, that one pilot there just got two kills against Japanese dive bombers. So whoever that pilot is having a good day, two kills. Curious if he's an ace or not. Looks like he's still up there flying. Or maybe he's a new pilot, I'm not sure. But again, only intercepting with one H-81E3, 31 Sonya dive bombers, three nade escorts. Let's see what happens here. It doesn't look like anything happened here. No losses. Uh, a few casualties inflicted. Another raid here. Another 13 Ki-36 Idas uh, and 10 Nates against a single flying Tiger once again. He damaged uh, another Japanese aircraft, but did not shoot any down. Uh, this pilot is being very successful. Okay. So no H-81 there on that afternoon bombing raid. All right, Dutch subs diving deep. Sturgeon firing some torpedoes near truck against some Japanese anti-submarine ships. Dutch uh, subs diving from Japanese destroyers there. The S-41 also being attacked by Japanese anti-submarine warfare. Landing more troops north of Timor. So again, those island chains to the south of Java really consolidating his control on the western part of the Dutch East Indies. And another bombardment attack at Changsha. So the bulk of our troops still are in Changsha. I think we've issued orders for them to withdraw across the river. But as long as he doesn't launch an attack there, okay. Bombardment attacks will wear us down slowly, but we are withdrawing from Changsha at the moment. So that's good. Oh my goodness, these large land battles take so long. I've already hit the fast forward button and it's still going. It's like the game can only accelerate so much. Okay. So, 138 Japanese casualties. Our counter battery fire destroyed two of his squads for two victory points. We lost seven squads, uh, destroyed 24 disabled. Uh, the interesting thing is we get two victory points for destroying his two squads. I think he only gets one for destroying seven of ours. I think it's a six to one per victory point ratio for the Chinese forces. Um, so that's an interesting little thing. Um, all right. Japanese shock attack at Hanyang. That makes sense. We were worried about that. They're shock attacking across the river here. We have a fair number of troops in this city, and it is a level two or a level three port, the, pro or the uh, fort. The problem is that most of these troops of ours had been issued orders two or three days ago to march east, and so they're all in move formation. So the fact that they're in move formation means that our troops are going to have a massive penalty. Additionally, he's got three fully formed divisions here. He's Actually, four fully formed divisions and an overstrength brigade here, uh, as well as two tank regiments. So, despite the advantage in defensive numbers, I would guess he's going to break through, and it does look like he does that. He takes the base at Sig, uh, and our, our units are retreating to Sigaton. It's a good thing we've already issued the orders to pull out of Changsha. Otherwise, we would be at risk. He could be driving northwest here, and he could cut our retreat off from Changsha. Though we could go north. Again, it all depends. These two bases here in our rear being held by paratroopers are a bit of a problem. Um, you can see here he got 10 to 1 assault odds. Japanese capture Hen uh, Hen Henyang. Uh, we lost 652 squads 
destroyed of combatant squads, 396 non-combatants, 134 engineers. The engineers probably are the biggest hit. That is a disastrous loss of engineers there. And 144 guns, similarly. The loss of guns and engineers are what's really going to hurt. Uh, manpower is less of an issue for, for China, but quality, like specialty troops, like engineers and guns, those are things you do not want to lose, and that's a pretty devastating loss there. Uh, 22,325 casualties. We did inflict 4,690. He did lose 15 vehicle or 15 squads destroyed. Um, he lost a, a substantial amount of troops disabled. So he lost 504 squads disabled with 15 destroyed. So about 520 of his combat uh, HVs or AVs are probably disabled. That's probably about a quarter of his force is at least temporarily incapacitated the question is how hard will he press now because he has driven us back the troops that he drove back are not in good shape and we do not have substantial enough forces in the rear to hold him however with those kind of disabled losses he may pause a day or two to recover his disruption i'm really curious to see what he does here because if he does immediately press west towards sigaton northwest towards sigaton um, and our troops have fallen back already if our troops from changsha and our other troops that were driven back can get back in time, we might be able to catch him off guard. Like if he overextends and our other troops all come in here simultaneously, we might be able to launch an attack of like 6,000 AV to counter his, you know, what is it, 2,000? So we might be able to give him an equally, if not greater, bloody nose and drive him back. The problem is if his force at Changsha, which is about five to 6,000 AV, is hot on our heels and pursuing aggressively, that may be a rash decision. So it all depends on what he does there. Otherwise, honestly, I think we're falling back toward these two cities here in the mountains that we lost. Uh, maybe not in the south. There's no reason to pull out of the south yet because they haven't really pressed hard there. Um, but we do need to retake these two cities, and then we probably need to pull our Changsha force back and, and form up a new defensive line on this city here behind the river. Probably another defensive line up here north of the river in these mountains to block the direct drive on Chongqing. And we'll have to pull our troops out of in, uh, Yichang as well, which is as soon as we pull out of, out of, uh, out of Changsha, that if they drive north here, these 120 miles, they could effectively cut those troops off as well. I think I've already issued orders for them to fall back. Um, so we should have a head start on the march, but that's going to be a pretty big deal. Um, he lost six, 17 vehicles, only one destroyed, though. We didn't really have effective anti-tank fire against those tank regiments. More bombardment attacks near Wenkau. Nothing really decisive there. A handful of casualties. Japanese bombardment attack at Kaigan against our troops here who are dug in there. Uh, the Japanese actually lost 34 casualties. We didn't lose anything. Our defending force is greater than theirs. We have we have more troops, more guns, more vehicles, more assault value. His bombardment attack basically just used up his supply and did nothing uh, for him. Japanese deliberate attack on uh, Pantar, north of Timor. Uh, there's no defenders there, so that'll succeed, probably without loss. Just adds a little bit of fatigue, maybe. Allied bombardment attack against the 16th and 33rd Divisions, so the Japanese forces at Bataan have consolidated. They now uh, know that we know that there are not very many of them, and so they've consolidated because they'll actually get a benefit or a bonus to their combat effectiveness if they're in one unit. So in that consolidation there, uh, they did lose 84 troops in the bombardment. We lost nothing. Uh, only six squads are disabled, however. They did lose one engineer squad and three guns. Japanese deliberate attack on the island of Timor uh, at this sort of off-base hex here, pursuing our Dutch garrison that fell out of Kopang. They had 3-to-1 assault odds. They did not destroy us, however. Actually, they lost 42 men, 3 squads disabled. We lost 9 squads disabled, 1 non-combatant destroyed. So a pretty even fight there despite their 3-to-1 odds. Just delays them a little bit more. The island of Tolod... Iladen, south of the Philippines and north of New Guinea, uh, was just seized. It's to the west of Baldabop. I didn't launch a, uh, a actual attack at uh, Bataan like a G-Man. I just bombarded, so the Japanese didn't really hold or not. They just got hit by artillery. I don't think the loss of casualties is necessarily worth what it would take to drive them back. Oh, the Dutch troops. Yeah, the Dutch troops did hold. Hold to the last. Exercise in rhetoric. Last foot of ground. Last stone. Last man. Last cartridge.
we need to send a little bit of uh, of Colonel Chamberlain out to the uh, to the boys in the Pacific. They could use a little bit of help. Okay, some of our RAF squadrons are arriving at different bases. And that's gonna do that. So let's go ahead and jump in. He names the term he names the turn. I got my waiters a little bit wet. What a jerk. Come on, man. That's pretty jerk. Jerkish thing to say. Okay, so first things first, our bombardment task force. We were sending our battleships out to Midway, probably taking unnecessary risk. But we have five battleships here, the War Spite, the Mississippi, the New Mexico, the Idaho, and the Colorado. Uh, the cream of our battleship fleet uh, are on their way to bombard Midway. They had been undetected by the Japanese. They did get detected this turn at a level 5 out of 5. It doesn't mean that they know what we have going. They probably know very little about the formation other than there is some sort of group of ships on their way to Midway. They might even think they're submarines. But the point is they have detected them, and next turn they'll get a better eye on them. I don't want to take unnecessary risks, so I am still interested in moving forward with the attack. But I'm actually going to go ahead and order them to move at flank speed. They're a little bit short of fuel. If I order them to move here at flank... They're a little bit short of fuel getting all the way back to base, but I assume by the time they get back to, like, French Frigate Troll, we can drop them back to cruise speed and make that up. Additionally, I do have a, uh, have a tanker task force here that is following them, and so uh, I think what we'll do here is we'll actually go ahead and cancel the follow, set the task force destination to La Cian Island, and then we'll have them just ordered to sit there and wait for them to come back. Um, so what we'll do is we'll have this tanker unit wait. In the event that they run out of fuel, the tanker will be around to provide fuel support. We also have two anti-submarine warfare task forces going with them. I don't know. I mean, they're still doing okay on fuel too, right? So if I make them flank speed, I mean, they theoretically could get back as well. So I think we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to have these battleships sprint forward. Hopefully they'll bombard midway this next turn. And then before he can react, they'll be sprinting back away uh, to Pearl Harbor. Not actually any kind of... It's not going to change the war, but it's just... It's something I can do to do something to keep him thinking and, and maybe keep him reacting. And maybe inflict a couple of casualties, hopefully at a limited cost. I did this once before, and I, I took a torpedo on a battleship that's... I think still repairing in Pearl Harbor, or maybe it just finished. And was, no, it's the Oklahoma, I think, and it's still 40 days away um, from... No, it wasn't the Oklahoma. It must be one of the battleships in this task force. Uh, Might have been the New Mexico? I don't know. One of the battleships, I think, of this task force took a torpedo and was out for like a month. Um, but it is what it is. We also have these cruisers north here of Midway. We're ordering them to return to Pearl as well. They've burned through a big chunk of their fuel. They're down to 30%. Um, so we, we tried to get up there and see if there was an AV, uh, you know, that we had detected up north near the Aleutians that might be heading down toward Midway. Doesn't look like it. So they're, they're falling back. Uh, we've got some subs on the way back to Pearl, low on fuel after patrolling off the Japanese home islands. So we've got that going. We've got some other subs here moving east also. The Tambor, very low on fuel. We've got a couple of other submarines here. The Nautilus is almost out of fuel. She could sink from system damage if I don't get her more fuel quickly. Uh, but she's two turns away from Johnston Island, so hopefully she doesn't take 14 system damage in the next couple of days. Once she gets to Johnston Island, they've got enough fuel there to, to replenish and hopefully get back to Pearl for uh, replenishment. Um, in terms of historical generals, yes, the game does include historical commanders. So if we actually go to Pearl Harbor, click on the land units there, and we go to the headquarters of the Pacific Fleet, we can see that Admiral Kimmel, Admiral Husband Kimmel, is still in command of the fleet. I would much rather it be Chester Nimitz, but I also don't want to spend 100 political points putting Chester Nimitz in charge. I believe there is an event that... Well, actually, no, it should have triggered already. Nimitz should already be in command, so I don't know why Husband Kimmel is still in command, but that's a lot of political points to spend switching him. Um, we have 336. I would much rather spend it on... Uh, land units. So I will take the political point hit at some point, but not quite yet. Um, I think we'll wait on that. Husband can uh, can still try and redeem himself. But that's just an example of some of the commanders that are that are there and that are historically accurate. The carriers of ours uh, have arrived at Perth. Uh, the uh, British carrier, the Hermes, has arrived at Perth. 
Perth has over a quarter million fuel. We've been sucking out the fuel of the Dutch East Indies. We pulled almost 300,000 fuel out of the Dutch East Indies, sent it to Australia to help fuel the economy there. The Hermes is now there. That will also help fuel the uh, the um, task forces that are on their way to Perth. So we've got the Indomitable and the Royal Sovereign, a British battleship and another British carrier, all converging on Perth. We've got the one CVL, a couple of heavy cruisers, light cruisers, destroyers, a pretty strong fleet based out of Perth. We're still sending more fuel and supplies to Perth from other destinations, from the Middle East, from uh, South Africa, all the way from you know the East Coast. Uh, but it's just not nearly the same sort of level of efficiency as we were gathering before. Meanwhile, the cruiser Sumatra did get out of harbor, so she was hiding at Port Headland, but Headland had no fuel available for her. So she did get out of port. The Sumatra did take on 75% fuel stores from another task force that we sent there to replenish it, and she's on her way. She's damaged. She took some damage from Japanese uh, land-based bombers. She's got 40 float damage, but assuming they don't hit her again, I'm hoping she can get away. There's no detection level on her. She's in heavy rain, so I'm hoping she's safe. She's probably borderline out of range of torpedo carrying bombers out of Copang, which is where she got hit from before, um, but I'm not sure. The ships we did send to give fuel, the light cruiser Durban and the destroyer Gridley, both up here, both very low on fuel now as well. Neither of them have suffered much in the way of damage. They're on the way back um, to Perth now. So we, they had orders to meet the task force. They no longer do, and now they'll head back to Perth. Um, they could stop at Car Caravan if they need to for a little bit of fuel there, but if not, then, then they won't. Um, destroyer tender on its way back to Perth over here on the northwest coast of Australia. We've got uh, anti-submarine warfare task force of three American or two American, one British destroyers uh, off here near Car Caravanton. Um, we've got a tanker with 5,000 fuel on the way to Perth. Uh, that's also in the same hex as the Indomitable. So between that tanker with 5,000 and these tankers off the coast of Perth, we've got another 20,000 fuel that is imminent to arrive at Perth. We've sent some tankers back to Colombo. Uh, to pick up more fuel uh, for Australia to try and keep that that logistical train logistical train flowing uh, and continue the operations there. Um, General Slim in uh, Burma, I'm not sure. Uh, so Singapore was bombed last turn. Assault value didn't change much. It's still almost at 1,100, so that's good for us. Still a good amount of supply, 29,000 supply. The um, fortifications are at four. We are spending supply to try and build them up to level five. Uh, he has not assaulted Singapore yet other than the first turn where he moved his units into the hex and forced him to assault because he was crossing a river. Uh, but overall, still a good amount of supply. I don't know. I think he could probably overwhelm me relatively easily there if he tries. But uh, if he's going to play it cautious, then it'll tie down maybe a division or two of Japanese troops. Uh, and that's that's worth, I guess, the delay um, that that it'll take. Um, let's see here. What's the morale out on some of these units? Like the 22nd Aussies, they've got 66 morale. The Hyderabad have 75 morale. The Gordon's Battalion has 54 morale. So the morale on these soldiers is actually reasonably decent. Um, okay, so we move north here. In terms of Burma, again, not a ton going on. We've got troops moving. We've got supplies unloading uh, at, uh, at Rangoon. We're trying to bring more supplies into the base. It's a bit of a supply sink. Uh, it's a, but the thing is, there's not a good, effective way to supply Burma from India. Uh, you can see here there's no connected major roadways or even minor roadways. There's no connected railways. A small amount of supply will filter through but not a ton, and so Rangoon is really an important base. With him holding Molmon, he could easily, easily, completely cut off the ability to supply Rangoon, but thus far he has not. He has sent a few bombers, I think that were based out of Bangkok, but his priorities seem to be uh, elsewhere. Um, so we've got another 9,000 on three tankers on the way in. We've got two tankers here on the way out, or not tankers, but two, uh, two transports on the way out. Then we've got these three transports unloading and these two transports unloading. Um, both those task forces are docked, uh, so that'll give them an efficiency bonus in terms of unloading, and Rangoon has 24,000 supplies. Uh, there's also a chance that the supplies that you drop in Rangoon can filter over to China, which is vastly uh, short on supplies, um, but it's it's not as efficient. You automatically get 2,000 supplies at Kuming every turn from the Burma Road, as long as you maintain this supply link here, which we still have. Uh, but in terms of uh, pulling supplies out of Rangoon, that's a little bit less efficient. But it can be done. Uh, the game just kind of automatically does it when it when it needs to. Um, 
So in terms of trying to retake these bases at uh, Chikang and at uh, Tuyan, uh, Tuyan we are moving, I think the 60th uh, Chinese base force, or sorry, core, uh, has a little bit more than 100 assault value here. It's on 109. I'm hoping that's enough to overwhelm what I think is an SNLF force uh, at that base. Uh, meanwhile, Chungkang, it's not quite the same story. It's a little bit, uh, little bit trickier. You'd be crossing a river. Uh, you'd be, you know, exposing yourself to a little bit more danger. We do have a fair bit of artillery and triple AAA that can participate in the assault, but we really need some infantry. Um, so we're pulling these guys out of uh, out of Yichang. A good, a good, good strength of uh, troops here easily makes up for the forces that we lost in the last battle. Thirteen hundred assault value there. Uh, we've also put the 45th Chinese Corps in front of Yichang to delay the Japanese there, although it's pretty battered. Only has 12 effective corps at the moment. Um, it looks like he's putting troops in the mountains behind Nanyang. I'm not quite sure why he would be going there. Um, I don't know if he's trying to move to this roadway here and flank us, but that seems like a dicey strategy because he has no supply line that way. Uh, meanwhile, we would still have supplies coming in from the south to Nanyang unless he moves these guys west to cut the road, which is possible. Uh, we have about 800 more assault value that are moving north. They moved about 25 miles. They're going to be moving to this hex. There's one enemy unit there. I'm hoping whatever it is we can overwhelm it. And then the, th the 12th Chinese Corps... Uh, I think we'll also fall back to Nanyang as well. Um, if he is going to try and move in behind Nanyang, it's going to take him probably the better part of a week uh, because there's no roadway. There's no effective way to move. We also have a pretty large force to the north here, almost 2,000 assault value, but it is very low on supply uh, just to the southeast of uh, Sion. I'm trying to make sure that they're not eating a lot of supply, but I think they're eating a little more than we can bring to them, so that's a bit of a, a challenge that we have to overcome. Um, these are the troops that just got got pretty pretty shot up here. They're at uh, Shiyong, or maybe it's these guys. These, yeah, these are the ones who fell back. Um, which is about five hundred assault value. Shiyong has about a thousand. So some of our troops actually moved in there. We'll switch these guys. Oh wait, shit. Are these guys moving somewhere? Did they have orders to move? I guess they didn't. I was worried maybe I was moving them back to take that, that base. But this will be at least a blocking formation of a thousand assault value. This base has a level one fort, so not very good. It is working on level two. If he tries to drive these, you know, eight units and 80,000 men west towards Shoyang, he could cut one of the two roadways back to uh, Chikikong. Um, but again, we are working on pulling our troops out of uh, Changsha. The artillery bombardments has slowed that process, but we should be out of there next turn pretty much with everybody. Um, my hope is that rather than, rather than him feeling enthusiastic about his success at uh, Hanyang, my hope is that he will just continue to bombard Changsha in the hope that he can drive north and cut the rear and force these guys to surrender. If he tries to drive west aggressively, while also attacking at Changsha, I don't think I'll have an opportunity. But if he delays attacking at Changsha, even just one more day, if he lets me get out of Changsha this next turn, and then he has to wait another turn to take the base before he can start pursuing me, I'll have a 46-mile and one-day head start on moving west. And then if he does aggressively pursue across the river here out of Hanyang, we might have an opportunity to surprise and decimate a Japanese formation there. Um, Jap Japan can cripple China's economy by strat bombing. We do have a house rule that prohibits that. He has not been strat bombing China. Um, all right, so we've got the two aircraft here. Uh, last turn, no losses for these guys. They have four kills. And I think it was Lieutenant Cole. Uh, you can see he's a level 81 experience. He has eight kills. He must be the leading ace in uh in this uh in this conflict so far where's the rest of this guy's uh ob chunking so we're gonna go ahead and send these guys to chunking with their two aircraft i don't want to leave them back there they had had a little bit of success against japanese japanese aircraft there but i don't want to get them exhausted and shot to pieces um chunking has a fair number of fighters based out of it we've got two 
Uh, flying Tiger groups totaling 23 ready aircraft. We've got two British uh, Hurricane groups uh, totaling 30 ready aircraft. Both are flying cap over the base at Tuyan and the base at Chikang in case he tries to bring reinforcements in there. Uh, we also have reinforcements on the way south uh, to Chikang out of, uh, where were they coming out of? Chongqing. So they're going to move a long ways to get there. It's quite a, quite a few miles to get there. 184 miles. So, anyway. Um, in terms of uh, the last turn, 4,000 Japanese air sorties against 2,300 allied. The Japanese lost nine aircraft in air-to-air -air battles against zero of our own. Zero aircraft destroyed on the field. Two Japanese aircraft destroyed by flak. 14 Japanese aircraft destroyed operationally. Uh, at least that's according to intelligence. That's a lot of ops losses. Um, so we're claiming, and this is obviously a subject of fog of war, but we're claiming six Ki-30 ANs were shot down uh, maybe that guy was an ace in a day. Maybe that H-81 pilot was an ace in a day. If he really shot down all or four of those in air-to-air -air combat, um, he might have also gotten one of the Nates or something. I don't know. But it looks like they lost six Nates, four Oscars, uh, or sorry, three Oscars, four Topsies, three Nates, two Dinas, one Lily, one Sally, one Sally, one Bab, one Tina, one Betty. Uh, for a total of 25 aircraft. And we didn't lose a single aircraft yesterday, so that's a pretty good exchange. If we look at our top pilots, Lieutenant Cole is the number one ace in our Air Force now. Eight kills, 81 experience, um, working on his way toward being a double ace. So that was uh, a pretty good um, uh, result there for us. Not a single pilot wounded, killed, or missing. Um, in terms of ships sunk last turn, I do think we lost that one cargo ship. Yep, off the coast of Oosthaven and near uh, Java and, and Sumatra. Uh, Japanese submarines put a couple of torpedoes in the Woolgar, uh, which was one of the cargo ships pulling back to safer waters. Wasn't that bad of a loss, though. Only worth five points. So that's a good result. We've been really focusing on China. We did look at the battleships there. That's kind of the main updates this turn. Obviously, we're, you know, shipping troops around. Uh, we're landing troops at Vavu to kind of form another base here in our, in our Fiji Island chain here to the east near the Tonga Islands. Um, but that's kind of the the update that I have for you here today. There's other stuff going on, but I'm not sure there's a whole lot else worth talking about. Um, if we take a look at Port Moresby, we're still waiting on these two companies of infantry here. 18 assault value on their way back. Uh, we're still working on getting that fortification up. It's only at level 3. Uh, we have some reinforcements on the way to Port Moresby, assuming that the Japanese don't sink them. They do have a very limited amount of detection over them, a 3 out of 3. So they probably don't know the type of ships. There's only two of the ships, so they might even think they're just subs. But there's two ships, the cargo ship, the Lycon, and the destroyer Pope, that are on the way to... Port Moresby, they are moving at flank speed, which for the cargo ship is uh, 13 knots. They are carrying the 53rd Australian Battalion of Infantry, which will bring another 42 assault value of reinforcements. The ship is worth 12 AV, so it's not worth nothing. The Pope is worth 5, for point of reference, a four-stack destroyer. And uh, by the looks of it, they won't arrive in Port Moresby tomorrow, but they'll arrive the day after. Um, it also looks like he has troops... In the mountains to the east of Moresby, making a slow march west toward Moresby. Um, the uh, Australian reinforcements should help. We have about 194 assault value there between the 42 on the ships and the 18 marching that way. Uh, we should have almost... Well, if we gave 18 more... Yeah, we'd have over 250 assault value there. Uh, with a reasonable amount of supply for the relatively small force and three forts... He could overwhelm us if he's bringing like a full division or maybe even a brigade, but but I think it's it's enough to potentially give him pause. Um, I haven't really heard anything from the carriers lately. I'm not sure where his are. Um, if we take a look at the... Let's actually... Let's look at that here. Let's take a look at Sigint. So, first, second, Sasebo SNLF is located at the Swingakang. Um, trying to see here if there's any... There's a Tempter Vision, the 11th uh, Royal Guard uh, Chinese troops. Uh, they're loyal. They're they're sort of Chinese prop, uh, not propo. They're Chinese. Uh, China, Japan established a, a puppet government in China. They raised some troops there, so that's what they are. They're not as good troops as, as the Japanese. Planning for an attack on Yicheng. That's fine. We're abandoning that base anyway. Um, Japanese Base Force planning for an attack on Singapore. We already knew they were going to be attacking there. Um... 
Yeah, I don't see anything about the Japanese carriers. There's always a little bit of a... No, actually, P. Warner, not Manchuko. China, Japan actually established a Chinese government. Uh, I don't know if it was out of Nanjing, but they established a Chinese government in sort of the heart of China itself. I don't know if they had done it by 42 or not. I thought that was more of like 1943, but they, uh, they set up a whole puppet government and everything uh, in central China. Their hope was that they could form a favor, a, a Chinese government that was favorable to the Japanese that would then uh, undermine the nationalists and allow them to sort of indirectly rule China. Japan really didn't want to fully occupy all of China. Uh, they didn't have the ability to, and they knew it. Uh, and this was one way potentially to sort of lessen the burden, given the fact that there was massive guerrilla warfare fighting going on throughout the Chinese countryside. And frankly, the game does a very poor job of modeling it, but Japan never really controlled the majority of China. Even when they advanced far inland, they really controlled the cities where they had big garrisons. They controlled some key roadways and railways. And outside of that, they really didn't have uh, much influence over a lot of like the farmers and, and whatnot. Um Okay, so Bataan, I mean, I don't know if we want to keep bombarding there uh, in Bataan. We still have 32,000 supplies, so we've, we've got some. Uh, we've got just shy of 2,000 assault value. Uh, the enemy forces there, there's two divisions, 35,000 men. I'm trying to get them to draw more men into Bataan. That's the entire strategy behind the bombardment, is to make him think, oh shit, he might actually beat me here. I need to bring reinforcements in. Um, because I don't want to attack and lose like 2,000 infantry or... Uh, combat infantry, or I don't want to attack and lose like 8,000 supply, which I probably would if I attack and I would lose, you know, it would be a little bit of a Pyrrhic victory. I would drive him back and inflict casualties, but at what cost? Uh, I would rather him pull, have to pull reinforcements in from other theaters to delay his advance south, but um, that, that'll that take time, and so that's sort of what the bombardment is trying to, trying to do. Um, yeah, I don't have a lot else going on. There's some logistical stuff that I'm going to take care of off screen. Um, that guy, cargo tanker, arrived at Cape Town. Cargo ship arrived at Cape Town. Meanwhile, Cape Town has 10,000. Actually, no, now we have 108,000 fuel in Cape Town. Hell to the yes. Where did that all come from? I don't even know, because none of these task forces have arrived yet with their fuel from the U.S. East Coast. That is 100,000, right? Yeah, 108, 250. I think we might have gotten, like, there's occasionally convoys are, are said to arrive at Cape Town, so maybe that's where we got the fuel from. In any event, that's pretty sweet. Yeah, it was probably a U.K.-based convoy. Those do arrive. Um... Meanwhile, Lido, we've got 13 Lodestars, 11 Hudsons, 10 DC-2s, 9 Blenheim 4s, 6 B-24 Liberators, although they are marked as the LB-30. Um, we've got a couple of groups of B-17s there. I don't know if I have an Audax there. I don't know what I can do with that. And we've got some DC-2s there, too. They're all set to train, by the way. We could upgrade them to Mohawk 4s. Not enough supply here. I don't even know what the Mohawk 4 is. No, I don't want to spend political points to change the aircraft in queue. Um, yeah. Hey, Admiral uh, Akbar. Long time no see. You might have been around, but I haven't seen you around. I haven't seen Jay Street either. Wonder where, he, wonder where he's at. He's been, he's been away for a while. Um, maybe he doesn't like me anymore. All right. Um, let's see. I think that's about all I have for this turn. I'm trying to see ship sunk. We already did that. Ship availability. What do we have coming up? In one day, we get a couple more cargo ships. In two days, we get a couple more cargo ships. In three days, we get the Dutch light anti-aircraft cruiser in Mombasa. Yeah. Too early in the morning for you, Admiral? Well, sorry about that. 
my streaming schedule is not convenient. I will 100% agree there. All right. Um, honestly, I don't know the name of the map mod. Uh, I know J or XTRG has it linked, but I, I don't kn actually know the name of the map. The name of the map mod. Interesting. You get ETO reinforcements on the West Coast in June of '45, but they're a static unit. So what's the point in getting all those troops? You get like 600 white rifle squads. What's the point of giving that to them, though? Hmm. Um. Man, I want that 31st Chinese Corps. Look at that. 729 squads? Whoa. What's coming up here? Uh, days until arrival. In two days, we get the 2nd 102nd Infantry Battalion at Bora Bora, as well as the 2nd 198th Coastal Anti-Aircraft Battalion. In three days, we get the 41st Australian Battalion. 50, you know, just one assault value. Um, some coastal defense in nine days, and the 44th Infantry Division, but it's restricted, so it doesn't do us much good. 1st Marine Defense Battalion arrives in Pearl Harbor in 11 days. So nothing really huge that is flexible. Nothing huge that we can take out and move and make a big, big impact. Maybe the 1st Australian Corps Engineer Battalion. Our next, big, our next real big reinforcement is the 20th Indian Division, which will be arriving in Bangalore in 11 days. We also get two Indian brigades, 84th and 75th, both both arriving in India as well. Almost 400 assault value adding to India by then. We also get the 48th Chinese Corps in 19 days, arriving at Chongqing. Trying to look for the next U.S. thing. We get the 7th Marine Regiment in 30 days, 142 assault value there. That'll be a good unit to get, along with the 1st Army Tank Battalion, although that's New Zealand arriving in... Man, New Zealand's going to be tank central. We've got an American tank battalion there already. We're going to have a New Zealand tank battalion there also. Ninth Regiment. Okay. Well, I think that um, that's probably going to do it for this episode here. Um, I don't have a lot else to share. China was the main focus, and then obviously our battleships that are about to hit them. Uh, I will do more orders off map, and we'll kind of wrap this up probably later tonight on my time, and then I'll send it over to XTRG. This video will go live tomorrow on Thursday, uh, February 20th, and uh, and we'll go from there. Uh, in terms of the channel, I might be streaming some Panzer Corps 2 tonight and a little bit later, uh, maybe in like 45 minutes. I might not. I can't promise one way or the other. Kind of depends on if, uh, X if Tortuga and myself are going to resume a um, EU4 series that we've been doing. I have never played EU4. Uh, until two days ago, and uh, I had some time, and Tortuga had a bunch of hours off. Um, I guess he's, like, doing jury duty or something, but we had a, a bunch of hours off, and um, and uh, so we, we played EU4. It was the first time. I've got, like, almost all the expansions because I'm a sucker, but I've never actually played it, so we played uh, EU4, Tortuga, myself, and uh, someone from Tortuga's Discord chat, uh, I've been playing as Brandenburg. We played uh, the first 30 years then. It was about a four-hour uh, playthrough. And then uh, yesterday we played another three hours. Uh, I've really been enjoying it. So I may play that off stream um, or uh, we'll do some Panzer Corps on stream because there's a, there's a beta going with the access to the whole campaign, but it ends tomorrow morning and I haven't actually played it yet. So I probably should do that. So we'll see. Um, but long-winded way of saying maybe more tonight, maybe not. We'll see. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know your thoughts below as always. And until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying once again, thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I'm just going to keep saying until next time, until next time, until next time, until next time, I'm out.